Hi everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on matrices. And in particular, I'm going to talk about an algorithm called Gaussian elimination, named after the mathematician Gauss. In previous videos, we talked about row operations and row echelon and reduced row echelon forms of matrices. And they're all linked with solving linear systems of equations. Now, the idea we're going to talk about today is an algorithm, a procedure for taking a matrix and putting it in a nice form, a form that we can use to read off some of the solutions to linear systems. So I'll talk about the general method and I'll do an example. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. All right, now this is a whole bunch of information on Gaussian elimination. Now, basically, Gaussian elimination is an algorithm for reducing a matrix to a row echelon form. And there's four bits here. Now, this is a lot to take in, okay? And I think it's, I'm just putting this in here for completeness. I think it's much easier if I just go through an example with you, okay? Now, <clears throat> The process starts with selecting a pivot entry or a pivot element and then doing some row operations on the matrix and some of the sub matrices. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to ask, go through everything here, right? That's just for completeness. But let me show you what, what this algorithm looks like. Okay. So you might think of this as your. Augmented matrix, so the first row would mean 3x plus 2y plus 1z equals 8. Second row would mean 2x plus 3y plus 1z equals 9. And lastly, 1x plus 2y plus 3z equals 8. So this is a compact way of writing it. We're asked to reduce it into a row echelon form. So the first step is to select a pivot element, or I, I call it a pivot entry, okay? From the left left from the leftmost column, sorry, let me put that up here. Select a pivot element or a pivot entry from the leftmost column, which are not all zeros, okay? All right, so I'm going to look here. This is a non-zero column, and I'm gonna choose the number one out of there, okay? Now, it's lucky that I've got a number one there. I'm gonna choose that to be my pivot, my pivot entry or my pivot element, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is get this pivot entry up to the top, okay? So I'm gonna to have to swap row three with row one. So that's a row operation, all right? So the way I'm going to do that is doing this. So I would denote that row one gets swapped with row three. Okay, so if I do that, I'll have the following. Now, and the way you can justify this is it, you don't change the solution set by moving the rows around because basically whatever you can do to a linear system, you can do to a matrix with regards to row operations. Okay, here we go. So now what? I've got my, my pivot entry up to the top. What I work with now is I look underneath that pivot entry and I force all of the, those entries or elements to be zero, okay? So I've, I've, I've chosen this, I've done this, eliminate all entries in the pivot column below the pivot element. So down here, I'm gonna make these zero. How do I do that? Through row operations, okay? So I can do that by doing the operations row two equals row two minus two row one, and row three equals row three minus three times row one. So let's do that, and I'm gonna record my operations to make sure I don't um, make a mistake, and to be very clear with my working. Okay, so the first row, there's nothing happening there, so let's keep that the same. Now, row two equals row two minus two row one. So this will be two minus two times one, 
zero. Three minus two times two, so that's three minus four, negative one. One minus two times three, that's one minus six, negative five. Nine minus two times eight, nine minus 16, negative seven. Row three equals row three minus three row one. Three minus three times one, zero. So I've got those both to zero now. Two minus three times two, that's two minus six, negative four. One minus three times three, that's negative eight. And eight minus three times eight, eight minus 24, negative 16. Okay, so I've got my zeros now. What's the next step? Well, now we start the process again, but on a sub matrix of, of what we've got. Let me show you that. So now I'm concentrating on this sub matrix. So you forget about what's happening up there and you apply the same method to um, what you can see. Okay, so how do I choose a pivot entry? Well, um, here I chose the pivot entry to be one because you can avoid fractions then um, and, and, and etc. It's okay to choose negative one as well. And here, um, to, to basically, that's going to be my new pivot. I want to make everything underneath that a zero. So row three would be uh, row uh, row three minus four times row two. And then you'll, you'll, you'll end up with something like that, okay? So let's choose that to be a pivot. Now, if you don't want to choose negative one to be a pivot, you could multiply the whole row by negative one, and then you would get a positive one there, okay? All right, so let's work out what row operations we want. We want, um, we want to make this a zero. So row three is going to become row three minus four times row two, okay? So the other rows won't change. Okay, so row three equals row three minus four row two. So we're just doing zeros there, so that won't change. Negative four minus four times negative one, negative four plus four, that's zero. Negative eight minus four times negative five, so that's negative eight plus 20. So that'll be something like 12. And negative 16 plus negative four times negative seven, so that's negative 16 plus 28, that'll be 12, okay? Oh, let me move that up a bit. Okay, so you could do some other operations here. You don't have to do those ones, but they're, they're just the simplest ones, all right? So how do we know when to stop? Well, let's look at what we've got now and see if we have a row echelon form. Okay, let's let, let's have a look. Okay, so all the zero, well, there's no zero row, so we don't have to worry about putting them all at the bottom. Every row is a leading row. Every, every row is non-zero. This is the, the first non-zero entry of row one. This is the first non-zero entry of row two. This is the first non-zero entry of row three. And as we move from top to bottom, we the leading entries move to the right. So that is a row echelon form, okay? So why is this form nice? Well, we can, let, let's say, again, th this, this represents a system of equations. I can solve for z, 12z equals 12. So z equals one, and then from here I know negative y minus five z equals negative seven. I could back substitute z in to get y, and then I can back substitute to get x, okay? So that's the algorithm there. I hope you like it. There's a few things that I just wanted to, to talk about as a, as a final slide. Now, the process of reducing a matrix to a row echelon form is called row reduction, okay? We're sort of using um, Gaussian elimination. Now, to, to avoid fractions, choose one to be the pivot element, okay? You don't always have to do that, but it's helpful if you can. 
Now, we can swap rows, we can multiply a row by a number, or we can, um, and we can add multiples of rows to others, okay? So, we use Gauss elimination, including multiplying a row by a number. Now, and this is, this is one of the things that people find a bit strange. If you choose a different pivot or different order of row operations, you may end up with different row echelon forms. Okay, so for example, let me let me go back to the other one. If I change my operations here, if I say if I multiplied row two by negative one, and then did some more operations, I would get a, di a slightly different form here. Okay, so what it means is that if you do some operations and your uh, you know a friend of yours does some oper different operations, you may end up with different matrices but the important thing is they represent the same solution set okay so what do you think choose a pivot move it to the top get everything underneath that pivot zeros and then choose a sub matrix and perform the whole operation and the process again until you get a row echelon form okay so we'll do some more of this Remember, in maths, it's not a spectator sport. You don't get good by watching. You've got to go and do the problems. So try to do as many row reductions and Gaussian eliminations as you can. Okay? See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.